important to derive aggregate demand by looking at aggregate expenditures, total spending in the economy. So first we're going to look at aggregate expenditures as it relates to national income. So how much total spending is there in an economy based on the level of income? We're then going to break those aggregate expenditures down into its components, look at what it tells us about the economy, and then we'll end up back at total spending. So let's start with aggregate expenditures. So here we have levels of income for our, our economy, and here we have total spending. Notice that when national income is zero, there is still spending in our economy. There is some spending we do that does not depend on the level of income. For example, even if we all had no jobs and no paychecks, we would still need some basic necessities to survive. Food, shelter, and so there would still be spending by households, for example, when national income is zero. So this level of spending we call autonomous spending spending that does not depend on income. In this example, the autonomous spending is 300. We can also see that as income increases, aggregate expenditures increase. That is, as a society, we spend more when we have more income. Well, let's plot this information. So here on the horizontal axis, we have national income. And on the vertical, we have our aggregate expenditures. Notice that when income is zero, aggregate expenditures is 300. So our line is going to start on the vertical axes where aggregate expenditures are 300. Then when income is 100, aggregate expenditures are 350. When national income is 200, aggregate expenditures are 400 and we can continue to plot the points all the way until national income is 800 and aggregate expenditures are 700. So we can connect our line here and we want to come up with a formula for aggregate expenditures. We want to break it down into the portion that is autonomous plus the portion that is induced. So induced spending is spending that depends on income. So this Y here is a placeholder for the income level. We already said that autonomous spending is 300. To figure out the level of induced spending, which is going to be some number times Y, we're going to need to find the slope. So slope is equal to rise over run which is the change in aggregate expenditures divided by the change in income. So notice we go from aggregate expenditures of 300 to aggregate expenditures of 700. So 700 minus 300, that's a change of 400. The run is the change in national income, so we go from zero to 800, which is a change of 800. So the slope that we have found is 0.5. This slope has a name. It is called the marginal propensity to expend, or MPE. So what this tells us is for every dollar of income in, every additional dollar of income in our society, the economy is going to spend 50 cents on itself. So our slope here is 0.5 and our total aggregate expenditures is 300 plus 0.5y. Now this y is a placeholder. If, for example, income is 300, then aggregate expenditures would be 300 plus 0.5 times that 300 income. And so total aggregate expenditures would be 300 plus 150 or 450. So notice when our income was 300, aggregate expenditures were 450. Part of that 450 is the autonomous spending we do regardless of income level plus an additional 150 of induced spending 
That's the spending that depends on the level of income. Now, when we look at aggregate expenditures, this function, what we do is we want to determine where the economy is at equilibrium. How big is this economy? Well, to do that, we draw a 45 degree line that shows all the points where income and aggregate expenditures are equal. So we'll draw our 45 degree line and here's the 8 and 800, here's the 700, here we have our 600, and we can connect this 45 degree line crossed and notice that it shows us the points where income is equal to aggregate expenditures. So for this economy, national income equals aggregate expenditures when the economy has an income level of $600. This is our equilibrium, this is our equilibrium size to our economy. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at where this aggregate expenditure function comes from, what changes it, and ultimately what will change that equilibrium size of the economy.